hello and welcome back and that is right srm 1.3 is finally 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 becoming available to the mr 2200 ac and the rt 2600 ac i was lucky enough to get hold of uh, the pat files to update the systems and also there is another little extra little tiny bonus it's a tiny tiny revision and an update of the firmware on the 6600 ax as well now at time of recording it's not actually available on synology's own website right now you can see there this is the page um, for the srm update generally and if we go into individual systems like the 2200 ac we can see that currently they are listing 1.2.5 but not 1.3 and if you make your way into other of the router systems such as the 2600 ac they are still listing 1.2.5 but from what i understand the release candidate will be arriving this week the rc version now what i'm talking about in today's video is i'm just going to show you it running on an mr 2200 ac so if we open up my synology assistant you can see there on the screen that we're running a 2200 a 6600 both of which are running this new 1.3.19316 it's a small update for the 6600 but it's a big old leap for the other two routers indeed now what does that bring to the table why should you care about this update well for those that aren't aware srm 1.3 has bring a, has brought a whole bundle of additional bonuses and a number of you have been sitting there tapping your watch wondering where it is mainly so you can do one dang thing and that is to start adding node points to your 6600 for those of you that bought the 6600 ax when it was launched you were like oh amazing cool it's got wi-fi 6 i can finally do vlan it's got id tag it's tag it's got all of those multiple ssid creations and multiple um virtual lan groups that you can attach them together along with a bunch of improvements graphically and in the user interface i hate seagulls um and it's all as, as good as all those additions brought you couldn't use your mr2200 mesh node points so those of you that were updating your existing wi-fi network the rt2600 ac were kind of pissed that you couldn't use your existing mesh nodes that you'd bought until now because of that conflict between the firmware update so as you can see here i've added a mesh node here to my existing uh 6600 ax network you can see it there mr2200 ac all added because it's running the firmware 1.3 now on the right hand side of the screen we have another mesh uh, uh mr2200 ac but it isn't in mesh and as you can see it is running 20 it's the 2200 ac it's running 1.3.1.9316 something i'm getting sick of saying and today let's go through how it looks and if there's anything missing or visible between these two router systems and what we're going to do obviously having that mesh node there is a tremendous boom and i think a lot of you that own the 2200 ac only care about this uh, update because you just want to start adding it to your primary route to your 2600 um, or your um, uh, 6600 ax and if that's what you came for the video for good for you buddy i hope you watch it but the rest of you let's talk about some of the differences between them because frankly the 2200 ac can now do everything at least in terms of software that the new 6600 can do so with that for example though it doesn't have the multiple antenna and ax and access to the 5.9 gigahertz band it does have lots of access and improvements that can be made to the um ports and the virtual network so as you can see i can't do a great deal on this route right now because by default it has gone into wireless ip so what we need to do immediately is update this to the wireless router mode and from there it will allow us to start playing with some of those virtual LAN stuff so while it does that on the right hand side it says it's going to take around about a minute we can see that srm 1.3 on the original 6600 gave us the option all the way along the side to control our primary networks and that smart wan feature as well and the mobile network stuff with the usb that's one of the things that has changed in srm 1.3 i would say that the number of compatible devices to be utilized via the usb port as internet failover 4g's mobiles is a little tighter it doesn't it's not as good anymore and i know that i have a phone that worked on srm 1.2 that no longer works on srm 1.3 and i don't quite know why 
uh, with regards to port forwarding. We can, of course, uh, create our own port forwarding rules, but mainly it's people that are going to want to create their new um, virtual networks there on that system. So, for example, in the SRM 1.3 on the 6600, what we would do is go ahead and do our new network name. Let's quickly check if the IP has changed on that 2200 AC, and that's why it's taking too much time. We can create our new network there. We can decide uh, what the um, identity of that is going to be. We can say whether we want the SRM to be accessible via this network. We can assign it to a physical port if we choose. So we can assign it to port three. So again, we can choose what we want to do. Some of them are already pre-assigned. And then from there, from that virtual network, we can go ahead, set up a specific SSID to it and more. It's that straightforward and there you go. It's really straightforward to create. I'm not going to bother creating an SSID there. So let's go in back into this router here on the right because I'm fairly certain we're going to have an IP change. So now we've changed over the operation mode and patched into the router directly, we're able to see a lot more of those controls. So once again, we can go into that local network control there and once again, go ahead and create ourselves our brand new um, virtual LAN if we choose to. All of the options remain exactly the same. We can go ahead and again give it its network we could create an ssid if we choose it's that straightforward we'll go through there and do you know what we'll give ourselves a wireless identity there patch in we're not going to be saving that and boom it's that straightforward to create those local area networks and the level of controls and options on uh, a 6600 with the same firmware genuinely is exactly the same if we come out of that there and this time go into the control panel of each of these devices so again if we move that out of the way go into the control panel again all of the configurations all of the choices are exactly the same you're not getting a pared down version of SRM 1.3 here between the devices everything from file services obviously there's going to be differences with regards to some of the Wi-Fi stuff uh, when you are talking about the different hardware architecture of both of these systems um, another thing we can do straight away coming out of that there as we've created that network as mentioned is to have a little look at resource monitoring there between the two of them so if we go back into the control panel there for both of them and have a little look about the system and what it's utilizing there in the background we can have a little look at system databases again exactly the same uh, databases for each of course there are options to regularly update unsurprisingly although there's no direct means with which you can monitor the resource consumption of the router because unlike a Synology NAS a lot of the CPU and memory monitoring is a lot more hidden in SRM 1.3 it has to be said that in pretty much every regard when it comes to some of the services and tools that you can use you're seeing no difference there in between the applications that are available to be downloaded and installed on your NAS be it the brand new super powerful 6600AX or the MR2200AC a very modest comparison router but both running the same software there same goes if we make our way into some of the network tools available on both of these devices so again we're going to the network tools and both of them have got those extra little bits and bobs not the network center we want the network tools andrews um, and then from there we can see both of them have got the ping the trace router and the wake on LAN facilities all built in a lot of these were always available in srm 1.2 it has to be said but it's good that some of the extra little bits and bobs that have been added in srm 1.3 are still very much available here the best we can get in terms of monitoring the cpu and memory resources is making our way into the status of the network center as you can see there and you can see that the 6600 is using less utilization thanks to those more efficient and more modern components that are being utilized inside additionally the system has more memory inside but because we're using that mesh node point on that that is making a little bit of difference there but still the ability to be able to access a lot of that information and all of it in that slightly more revamped and more user-friendly um, I would say and definitely more intuitive interface of SRM 1.3 with some of the options in better locations is certainly going to be a lot more desirable to a lot of users again safe access still remains probably for me the reason to buy a Synology router still ever present here on um, both the new and the old routers thanks to the parity between the software on both platforms and indeed if we make our way into uh, the Wi-Fi connect area between two of them you can still continue to add nodes to the SRM 1.3 uh, older mesh router there just like you can in the newer system with all of the notifications monitoring 
and more between the two of them readily accessible along with account creation tool creation um, um, service access creation rules two-step authentication all of that is ready and available in SRM 1.3 for the older generation and the newer generation Synology routers there so again we're there it took a little bit longer than a lot of us would have liked to have seen SRM 1.3 arrive on these older generation Synology routers it's a shame that we're not seeing it rolled out for the likes of the RT 1900 but I understand you know there is a commitment to software I do think it can run it I think the RT 1900 has more powerful hardware, maybe short of memory than the 2200AC, but you know, let's not quibble. And again, although right now at the time of recording, we haven't got the release note um, or the um, access to the download for SRM 1.3 for these routers on Synology's own website, it should be rolled out very, very soon. So it's recommended that you either visit those pages, you know, periodically or probably a lot easier and something you should already be doing is to head into that control panel go into the system settings there at the bottom and ensure that your update settings are set to notifications when an update becomes available you may not necessarily want to immediately update because you know there are changes between SRM 1.2 and 1.3 but from here you're able to make sure that you at least get notifications or if you choose to choose for the update to immediately install on your router system we're just working right now on a video to show the guide steps for updating your mesh node points to allow you to create um, a combination of RT6600AX and MR2200AC routers in a single mesh network and of course we're going to be doing performance and distance testing with this new mesh network taking advantage of the improved coverage of the 6600 in conjunction with Synology's uh, mesh points there but that's about it there is should be a link in the description to the, an article that we've done in this with a few screenshots over on NAS compares but also as soon as these updates become available I'll try to make sure that we update the links below so you can get hold of some of these files here for um, either downloading them manually yourself so you can update them or at least give you a heads up when these appear on the official pages bear in mind again an RC or release candidate is pretty much the product that uh, the brand in this case Synology plans to roll out it's pretty much the same as a final product think of it as um, the final box tick the final crossing the T dot in the I but otherwise thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed this click subscribe if you want to learn more and stay abreast of this as we explore this subject click like if you enjoyed the video it helps me and it helps me know what I'm doing right on the channel and visit the links in the description thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time